This video is brought to you thanks to the generous support of Artenda, a database presenting a clear and high quality overview of art opportunities and open calls for artists. Hello dear readers and subscribers, welcome to another video with some practical career advice for artists. And in our previous videos we have discussed the artist resume, the archetypical structure and unwritten rules of the artist resume and how you should integrate it into your professional industry approved artist website. However, and rightfully so, a recurring question and recurring issue, how can you set up your artist resume following this professional structure if you have nothing to put on your artist resume? Well, therefore, in this video, we're going to discuss 10 strategies how you, with no experience at all, can improve your artist resume today and create your own successes in the art world. An artist resume is a list of all the relevant factual information of the artist in question of their achievements in the art world. Most artists with little to no experience will opt to have no artist resume at all. However, this is a bigger mistake than having a very limited resume. All artists started somewhere and it is very important for the gallery director or collector that gathered an interest in you to be aware of these things and to be aware where you are in your career now. Because with a blank resume, we can't expect to be invited by galleries or to be successful when applying to art opportunities. So we're not gonna have a blank resume and we're not going to lie about it either. Nor are we going to sit around and wait for something to happen out of the blue to add our resume. No, we are gonna take matters into our own hands and create our own successes. Things that you can do today, that anyone can do, and that will be beneficial for your resume and that will actually get you started in the art world. So before we dive into some very witty strategies in terms of art politics, let's start with something very basic, something that everyone can add and should add to their artist resume. Your basic information, your contact details, and your education or training. Your basic information always needs to be your name, surname, when you were born and where, and where you are currently residing and working. This is applicable for everyone, so let's start here, and it should look like this. When it comes to your education, if you have no relevant education or no education at all, do not write down you're a self-taught artist. Simply leave this segment out entirely. If you have some remotely related uh, education to art, for instance, as a graphic designer, or art history, or architecture, or theater studies, then you can implement this here. You could also add some courses, apprenticeships and workshops here, but if you don't have any of these, simply leave this blank. When it comes to your contact details, normally at the end of an artist resume, you could share your dealer directory. However, as we do not have any gallery representation yet, we're simply gonna share our full contact details. Mentioning your studio address, your website, your phone number and email address. And if you write them down in this structure, it will kind of take up some extra space. Now, let's start with some more witty strategies, how you can improve your artist resume and how you can get started with gathering some real experience as an artist in the art world. The exhibition history is arguably the most important segment of the artist resume. However, if you haven't had any exhibitions yet and nobody is inviting you, you simply have nothing to show here. And it is crucial that you have something to show here. So instead of waiting until somebody invites us, let's take matters into our own hands. So the first strategy here is to organize an open studio day. I would advise you to do this yearly even. Here you open your studio for the public, most likely for your friends and family to have some foods and drinks while discussing your art. And you could also invite some fellow artists or share the event on your Instagram. An open studio day is the most informal and most accessible way to start exhibiting. In a familiar environment and surrounded by people you know well, you can exhibit your work for the very first time. It's a great way to gather some experience, to think about how you can show your work, how you can talk about your work, and also a first thing to add to your artist resume. You could do this next week and start organizing it today, and then you already have one thing on your artist resume. You can even, when making this something yearly, add the one for next year, so you actually have two things already on your artist resume. If you don't have a real art studio, you could also host it in your living room. And if you don't have many people coming over, that's not a real problem either. It is a first track record in your exhibition history, and it's a first 
experiment or a first experience for you to exhibit your work. I would advise you to write uh, your uh, Open Studio Day in an abbreviation, for instance, uh, OSD instead of Open Studio Day. By doing so, the person who consults your artist resume could think this is the title of a show. So you don't have to specify this, nor are you lying about it. So that way it comes across more professional. And when you follow the archetypical structure, then it should look like this. One for this year and one already for next year. Another great way to gather some genuine exhibiting experience is by hosting your own show. You can rent an exhibition space for a day, a weekend or a couple of weeks, possibly with some other artists to split the cost. And by doing so, you will have your very first actual exhibition in an actual exhibition space. This is once again a terrific opportunity to simply gather some experience and to add a show to your artist's resume. It is also the perfect setting to take some professional looking pictures of your works in the form of installation views and to add this to your website and to share it on social media. You could also even make some first sales happen and once again invite your friends and families. In fact, we prefer this than exhibiting with some of the so-called vanity art galleries that would charge you tremendous amounts of money. Here everything is controlled by you, so you control the costs, the people who come, and it is less frowned upon in the art world than exhibiting with a vanity art gallery. In a similar vein, another possibility to host your own show is by having your own booth at an art festival or an art fair. However, here I do believe it is a bit more frowned upon or a bit less accepted, because now with these fairs they are much more sales oriented, so you kind of end up in this role conflict as the artist, but also as the salesman or saleswoman. So this is a little bit more tricky. It can be lucrative, more lucrative, but it's also a lot more expensive. So there is more risk to it and also more risk for your artistic integrity. Further, I'm convinced that these personal exhibitions are crucial in the development of you as an artist, because with your first shows, you will make mistakes. And almost every artist seems to go through this phase when they are exhibiting for the very first time that they put too much art in the exhibition space, that they fill up the walls entirely, that they hang their paintings on cords or at little text uh, pieces next to every piece. All these common mistakes that you'll have to learn or when you're talking about your work that you're more like presenting a sales pitch instead of a natural talk. All these little things are things that you need to learn and by doing these personal exhibitions, you have the freedom to allow yourself to make these mistakes and to learn from these mistakes before you end up exhibiting at an actual serious art gallery. I would also advise you to try to do this yearly as long as you aren't receiving any actual exhibition invitations yet. And once again, if you follow the archetypical structure, it should look like this. Our fourth strategy to improve your artist resume is exhibiting locally at public institutions or at uh, public places. This is a first proactive way to exhibit with another entity that you're not hosting in your studio or in a space you rent, but in collaboration with somebody else. The most commonly known approach for this is to take up contact with several businesses such as restaurants, coffee houses, uh, hotels, uh, bookshops and to ask to show your work there. However, I don't believe this is the ideal way to go because it can often be time consuming to find people who actually want to go forward. So it can often be an unfruitful venture when looking for uh, these kind of collaborations. And your work is kind of presented as decoration and it's not entirely about the art, but they simply make part of the interior of the decoration. And we want it to be about the art, of course. So a better way would be to focus on some public places and institutions, most often government related. And most often these government related institutions will promote and support local activities when it comes to art and culture. Think of the libraries, city hall, cultural center, theater. And here the context is of course a lot better and you'll be more successful here in finding such a collaboration as well. So for instance, we take up contact with our local library and we offer our efforts to create a lovely exhibition. It will cost them next to nothing and they'll have a nice event happening. And for you, you have an opportunity to exhibit your work. Win-win, a perfect example of a synergetic collaboration. You can try to do this frequently, but I would advise you not to be too pushy. And if you, for instance, have our exhibition at a local library titled A Visual Story, then it should like this. 
Another way to work on your exhibition history is by applying to open calls for exhibition. Every year at several institutions, museums or galleries, there are open calls for exhibitions. Instead of waiting for galleries or museums to invite us, we can proactively look for these open calls for specific exhibition projects. Your first gallery exhibition and especially your first museum exhibition is a major leap forward and a terrific asset to have on your artist resume that will increase your credibility instantly. The best way to find these open calls for exhibitions is by using databases such as our partner that we mentioned at the start of the video, Artenda.net, because they compile all of these open calls. You can simply navigate to exhibition calls and look for an exhibition that is suited for you in terms of the location, the timing, and of course your work. We have seen numerous artists that have been tremendously successful via this platform, so why shouldn't you? If you set up your website the correct way, you have a decent artist resume by following the advice from this video and from our other video concerning the artist resume, and your work is also pretty good, then it is very plausible that if you continue to apply consistently and persistently, you will have a yearly success via this platform. Once again, you should write down your exhibition in this structure. Now, another strategy to make your artist resume look more convincing, more solid, more decent, is instead of having a fractured selection of your shows at uh, solo exhibitions, group exhibitions or art fairs, you want to compile them all together. Further, you can specify the type of exhibition at the end of the exhibition title, and by doing so, these fragmented things that I have shown you throughout this video will look together like this. So this is starting to look like a real exhibition history. And this is something that's achievable within half a year or a year. Next, in a similar vein as the open calls for exhibitions, we have the open calls for other art opportunities, such as grants, art residencies, and of course, art contests. Here, Artenda.net is once again the ideal to look for these opportunities. When being selected for one of these art opportunities, once again, your artist's resume will make a major leap forward because it is an actual validation from an entity from the art world that your work is good, that it means something. It will increase the value of your works and make your overall profile as an artist much more appealing for galleries and for collectors. Further, most often at the end of these art opportunities, there is an actual exhibition to showcase the works you've created during your residency or to showcase the works by the selected artists or the finalists of an art contest. So here you can actually add two things to your artist resume. You can mention your artist residency or art award or art contest and you can mention the exhibition in your exhibition history. Here, once again, I would advise you to compile these things all together and if you continue to apply consistently and persistently, you can have a yearly success here as well. Next, we have the segment of art collections where we'll discuss how you can gift your work to a collection. This segment is most often entirely blank with numerous artists. However, there are some methods to actually add some things to this segment. First and foremost, you can mention some private collections, however, without specifying them, because first, they are private, but also it could be that the only person that has a work of yours is one of your parents. So here you can simply vaguely state that your work is being collected in various national and or international private collections. Incredibly vague, but something you can write down. However, a more crafty way to get your art into art collections is by gifting your artwork. You might think, well, then I'm not selling it, I'm giving it away for free, but chances are that you will monetize that gift indirectly, but in the long term, because it improves your overall profile as an artist and your artist resume. So instead of keeping hold to a work that will probably never get sold or maybe that you don't like anymore and that you want to destroy or simply store away hidden from the world on your attic, you can use it to make something happen for both your resume and your career in the long term. However, you can't do this by writing to the Museum of Modern Art or Centre Pompidou and expect them, even if they don't have to pay anything, to accept your work. However, along the way, with those previous exhibition strategies, for instance, at your local library or after an open call at a museum or with your first gallery show, you can generally, as a token of gratitude and as a kind of investment in the possibility of continuing your collaboration and with the prospect of having this on your artist's resume, gift them a work to their collection, albeit 
their personal collection in, in case of a gallery director or the city collection, for instance, in case of a city library. You give them something and most likely they will give something back to you later on. And simultaneously, you have something to add to this segment of collections, increasing your credibility. So this is possible even with institutions or galleries that don't have a permanent collection on display. For instance, if you would gift it to the city library, they can simply hang it in their offices or in the hallway or in the city hall. As a result, in this case, with the city library exhibition, our collection segment could look like this. Next, let's discuss press and publications. As with our previous segments, we don't have to sit still and wait for someone to invite us to get featured in their magazine, because that won't happen simply out of the blue. Instead, we can proactively search for the submission policies and the open calls that numerous online magazines and even printed magazines have. Press coverage or a publication is a great asset to your artist's resume. Not only is it a validation of your talent and your work by the art world because a magazine sees it as good enough to feature in their publication, you can also use the text on your biographic segment, for instance, on your artist website. So instead of having to write a text about yourself, in which you have to rather unnaturally write about yourself in third person, you can simply share their text here and refer to them, which makes you look a lot more professional. There are numerous platforms who have these submission policies, and then there are also magazines that have their art contests to get featured in their magazines. And then you also have some magazines in which you can submit, but you have to pay for the writer that they have to assign for their magazine, so they say that you are good enough to get featured in their magazine, albeit online or in print, but you'll have to contribute by sharing some of the costs. And still, this is a curated selection, even though you have to pay for it, so it does mean something. And if you can spare the money, you should definitely go for it. For instance, at Kai, we also offer this service. We want to share our audience and try to support the artist. So here there is another win-win. There is no cost for the magazine to feature you. And you, you have limited costs, but you have a lot of eyeballs because you can enjoy the audience of the magazine that is willing to work with you. And it is a great asset on your artist resume. Here you could also include your exhibition catalogs or even create your own exhibition catalog at one of those self-hosted exhibitions. And once again, here I would advise you to compile press and publications together to have a more substantial list. So it would look like this. Here if you would submit to Contemporary Art Issue and that you've been accepted. And here the exhibition catalog of our exhibition at the City Library. Last and not least, you could also consider contributing to the art world from a different perspective and in a different role. This is art-related experience, for instance, as a teacher, as a curator, as a mentor, or maybe as a volunteer at an art festival or event. By doing so, you will not only have some additional professional experience to add to your resume from another role than being an artist, you can also network organically, be involved, and improve your overall profile as an artist. So now that we have discussed these 10 different strategies, let's have a look at how our artist's resume would actually look. So let's start with the worst case. So this is practically everything you could do straight away that you could do today. So when following our template for artist resumes, you can find the link in the description below or via the previous video about artist resumes. You will see that in the worst case, your artist resume can be half a page already. And in the best case, in the case with some of our um, exhibition opportunities, for instance, at the city library, etc. Your artist resume can look, and this is achievable within a year, I believe, would look like this. So this is almost a complete page already. This proves that you can create and set up your artist resume correctly and the industry approved way, starting from today, to make your own success and to be taken seriously as an artist, even if you have no experience at this very moment. You can read the full article of this overview of these strategies a bit more in depth and online in written text with the structures that you could copy and paste to your resume by consulting the complete article for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Make sure to watch our more complete and extensive take on the artist's resume next. Support us on Patreon and please consider subscribing to stay posted for more contemporary art. Bye.